Welcome to Free Range Sailing. For those of you that are new here, our boat Marul is a Clansman 30. She's a fiberglass 30 foot masthead sloop built in New South Wales in 1969. Troy bought her seven years ago in Cairns and sailed her around the top of Australia all the way to Perth. Three and a half years ago, we sailed north from Perth to circumnavigate the Australian continent together, filming our cruising adventures and attending to any essential maintenance along the way. We are currently in lockdown in Tasmania, the southernmost part of the continent, where we've decided to carry out a long overdue refit. If you want to be notified of all our weekly refit videos over the coming months, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button. We did not want to carry out a complete interior overhaul of our tiny sailboat while still living aboard, so we were very grateful to have found this little cottage to rent only a stone's throw away from the marina. Some new and incredibly generous friends lent us the hottest wheels in town and after several days of trips to offload all our belongings, we had emptied Marul, ready to begin her refit. Okay, so by the middle of the first week, we ripped everything out. <laughs> Remember this used to be, uh, you know, like cupboards and everything else like that. We've got back to the skeleton frame here. See, that's a little bit loose. And we've scraped a lot of the loose paint already off. Um, some people might think that's an unnecessary step, but it, it's a lot easier to clean up large paint flakes than it is paint dust. Um, and again, we wanted, to, we wanted to scrape off what we could, and we still need to give all of this surface a good wash and a degrease before we sand. We don't want to use the machines to dig the grease further down into the sanding grooves. But before I do any of that, what I want to do now is just go through and tidy up some of this um, old wiring. Because you've got multiple runs. You've got some coming up here. You've got some coming along here. And then you've got some coming along in the cupboards as well. As, as well as some coming along underneath. I've just laid out what tools that I'm going to really frequently need to use. Obviously a, um, a drill driver is a, a big one. And our pantry is just secondary tool storage. So we're not getting into the sanding for a little while. But these tools like... Small measuring. My favourite little ruler once upon a time. And of course I'd be lost without my berniers. Now before I dive in here and start disconnecting things, I did go outside before and just um, put a, a rope around the wind generator so it can't spin. And that's because that um, the way that's controlled is the positive and negative coming out of the wind generator are joined by a switch and they fight the windings fight against themselves if you like and it can only spin uh, quite slowly. If I disconnected it all now, it would actually go into free spin um, and overspeed, it would be crazy out there and be very hard to get under control. So that was one precaution I took. So just while I'm uh, pulling this all apart, some of the wiring that we're going to keep, just give it a bit of a renovation. So this was done up with um, self-amalgamating tape, but I prefer heat shrink, and I particularly prefer heat shrink that's double wall. Um, oftentimes you'll see it says dual wall. Those two walls of this heat shrink, in between them is a type of glue. So when you actually put this heat shrink on, what you do is you just keep going until you just see a small shiny bead of glue come out the other end. So you uniformly shrink it and just keep an eye on it. And then to finish it off, you just keep hitting it with a heat gun until you just see a little bit of glue. And that's, it's probably a little bit hard to show you, but you can just see a tiny little clear bead come out top and bottom. So that's, uh, that's nicely done. And I've just got a fairly fairly uh, modest file here and just shine up the um, shine up the contacts so there's no corrosion. You'd be surprised how much resistance um, you can put in your electrical systems just by having a bit of corrosion on these. And if you're having troubles with a bad starter motor or you're having some electrical problems, the easiest thing and the first thing that you should be doing when you're going troubleshooting is to check that there's no corrosion on the contacts but also that those contacts are nice and firm not really lean on them and risk breaking something but nice and firm so there's no movement okay 
no vibration can set in there because as soon as you have a little gap and these things are rattling around, they're only intermittently touching. And so each time they, the contact breaks, then of course the electrons stop flowing and then they go again and you get those intermittent faults. <laughs> they're a real pain. So tight contacts and those contacts corrosion free. When you're putting heat shrink on your um, electrical cables, and I know I've been, I've been guilty of not doing this in the past, but you should just use a heat gun, all right? No open flame. This is a fairly cheap one, Ryobi. This still does a pretty good job. You know what's a deal breaker if you're out looking for your own heat gun? That it doesn't stand on its back, all right? Make sure that that's a nice flat plane. So it can just stand there because you can turn that heat gun on. They've got vents at the side. You can have both hands free. We're really loving that about Tasmania. It's quite different to the rest of Australia in that you can just wander around and forage stuff on the road and around about the place. In other parts of Australia you can't really forage blackberries because they get sprayed. Oh, they're slippery jacks. You can tell they're slippery jacks because they have a sticky, sticky top and a spongy on the side. They don't have gills like other mushrooms. A lot of the local wildlife really like these, so we're quite lucky to find some intact. We keep finding them all chewed up by other animals. To prepare slippery jack mushrooms, or set mushrooms as they are known in Europe, Peel the spongy underlayer away from around the stem and then turn over and remove the slippery skin off the cap. So I just got them on a tray by the fire. They were pretty wet because it rained a lot yesterday. So it might not they might not work out, I'm not sure. We'll see. Some of them cooked, some of them dried out. So what I'm going to do is just chop them up. <laughs> that, that one's a bit cooked. <laughs> what I'm going to do is just chop them up and put them in the beautiful chicken and vegetable soup I'm making right now. Do you have to peel that stuff off? I've already peeled it off. Oh. They just were a bit brown under the skin. It's an amazing taste. Mm. But yeah, I'm going to put them in this soup that I'm making. Chicken and vegetable soup because we had roast chicken for dinner last night. There's a few wiring issues being uh, being addressed now, and one of the big ones that was bugging me for a while was when I bought Marul, the um, there was a house bank of batteries in the toilet. When when you sat on the toilet, it meant your your knees were right up here around your chest, which is probably um, some people might say that's a good thing for your bowel health. I don't know, it's not what this show is about, is it? But um, what it has meant, when I moved the batteries back here to sort of try and get the, the weight a little bit, um, you know, a little bit aft because, of course, you've got chain and lock, you've got water up front and things like that. I want to sort of balance the boat out a little bit more. And I wanted less cable runs. So what we have is um, the, a lot of these battery communication cables, they're the same length as if the batteries were still up there. So even though the batteries are only a foot and a half away from each other at the moment, as far as an electron is concerned, they may as well be a lot longer. Not only that, these cords take up space and it's only a small space. Well, the whole boat is a small space. Um, they, they jumble around and they're stored in here. So it makes a lot of sense to trim these down and get them to the right size. The banks are made up of 6 volt batteries, so two lots of 6 volt are in series to get 12 volt and then those pairs 
are paralleled. The cables are a bit long and also last time they were done, um, this is quite common on boats, when people are making up the cables they might not necessarily have the best equipment and they do the best that they can. So with this one, you know, like, <laughs> I'm not sure what's been used for that. Um, and then, you know, some self amalgaming tapes gone on there, but because it wasn't a very good crimp, you know, you don't have great, you don't have really great contact there um, and some of the strands might spread. I've been lucky enough to be able to borrow a hydraulic crimper and the benefit of that, of one of these, is that when you throw a crimp, when you throw one of these lugs in a crimper, all of the forces are acting all the way around, so what you'll get is a solid core of copper right in the middle of that lug and really good contact um, and you know like 100% electrically sound. So that'll be just another worry out of my mind. The re when you don't have great contacts in electrical um, connections, those little gaps can be a source of heat. You know, like if the resistance builds up, you might get sparking. You might get sparking in an area where if you have lead acid batteries, there might be an accumulation of hydrogen gas. We all know, since the Hindenburg disaster, what happens when you light up hydrogen. So I've cut it to size, and now I'm just going to use my knife to strip back the insulation. So what I want is a about a 45 degree cut around there, so it comes out beveled, but I'm just being very, very careful not to nick into the actual conductor. Let's see if I've got it. I don't want to press too hard. <laughs> okay, that looks fairly good. And I'll just tidy that up a bit. When you look at the ends of these, they're actually flared a little bit. So it helps if the conductor isn't, uh, the insulator, sorry, is not cut exactly square, if it's got a bit of a bevel on it. Let's see if this 35 fits on it, and it does, and it's a beauty. So now I'll just compress one of these lugs onto there, and then I'll finish it off with some double wall heat shrink stuff with glue in it. If you're looking for a good uh, labeling option, white shrink wrap and a marker pen. Alternator, full size. Labelling things clearly helps everybody and also you might do a job and you might not touch this for another two years. This will help jog your memory. When you're looking at all these cables you might go well of course that's an anchor cable it's leading forward and you know there's only one thing up there that takes this heavy cable. That's fine but I'm labelling it back here in the compartment. So when you're looking down at there's, there's just going to be a big jumble of cables and things like that down here. Um, you want to be able to see what you're looking at fairly easily. This cable, I don't actually want to shorten that much, but this, this connection is, is, is just so... I think we'll just replace it. Um, talking of dodgy jobs, now I'm just using these um, cutters rather than going out and getting some specialty parrot beat cutters for these wires. But really, they're not, um, if you're careful, they're not that hard to cut. Just make sure that you get a nice square cut and if you're using good cutters like these Nipex, it's totally possible to, um, to cut this stuff just with these. So that's um, before crimping. It's a little bit messy down there isn't it? But we've got um, a fairly reasonable transition where the bevel goes into it quite nicely. I'll push that down a little bit more so it'll, it'll snug down on there. Then we'll give it a crimp and we'll put some heat shrink on it and that'll be, um, that'll be a, a vast improvement on that. So when you're knocking around with these battery lugs, they'll have the numbers um, printed on there. This says 35 10. Okay, 35 millimeters squared is what the 35 is and 10 is 10 millimeter hole. It's in Australia. I'm not sure how they work in the uh, work in the states or elsewhere around the world. And then on the dies here for my hydraulic lug crimp, it's got 35 on there. So I know that 35 will go in quite nicely there, and then it'll. Come 
press it. So a big part of um, a big part of doing a nice job is is just a matter of knowing the actual things that are out there that you can use. I remember when I first saw heat shrink, I was just amazed. And if you if you don't know about it, you know that stuff is um, you know, it really uh, it really finishes off a job really beautifully. So and particularly this dual wall, um, you know the stuff with the glue in it. That's what you want for a marine installation. The other thing I like is I've got some of this liquid electrical tape and um, you know that stuff is it's just like a, a rubbery paint and you can you can put it on and it sets and it's quite flexible and it, it lasts for a long time so any wiring that I'm not going to um, renew but still looks in reasonable condition and it's got decent strain relief I can just paint a little bit of that on there they call it a liquid electrical tape and that seals that seals it also really really nicely it's amazing how many problems that you can just do away with on a boat or any any sort of thing that moves and you've got DC just by having good tight clean connections. Yeah you know, sometimes I'll pay that money and then the, the technician will come down, charge them a minimum fee, you know, whatever the call out is, maybe fifty dollars, maybe more. <laughs> come down and just find a loose connection. So, if you know that when you're trying to troubleshoot before you uh, you know like if you're not you're not fully conversant with, um, with DC electrical. One of the things that you can do to sort out a lot of your problems is just, is everything tight? If you wobble it, can you hear a little, or see sparks? That's bad. So that looks pretty good. I'll leave that out at the moment because I think I might just renew this whole bit of wood or even just get a, a little fascia for it and just recoat this because I'd like it to look prettier. But this is a this is a bit of a nasty one. So what we've got is just twin wires here. I, I've cut this off. So twin wires here, and then we just had a bit of a join, looking a little bit um, ordinary. At least this is self amalgamating tape here, so that's not too bad. It goes along about a foot of wire, <laughs> and then we have another connection. This one's used electrical tape. Okay, electrical tape on a boat doesn't really it's not that great. You're better off using heat shrink or self amalgamating tape. If seawater gets to these, they just sort of turn into a, they're a sloppy mess. And because it's um, because we've had electrical tape here rather than a, a better product, we've probably got a bit of seawater in there and a bit of corrosion. So a little bit of flexing. As soon as I undid this, this just snapped straight out of its connector. That's the earth. It doesn't matter whether it's earth or positive because electricity is going in a circle. The supply or going back to negative doesn't matter before anyone but I'll, I'll just say back to negative but I'm sure there's a few people that are aware of which way the electron <laughs> goes but um, let's just let's just keep negative as negative so what I was looking for is my wire strippers and look if you if you're going to be doing any electrical work you really want to go and get some um, some wire strippers you can see these have been with me for a while and they've I've done a, a bit of work. So what we're looking at here is this wire. It's copper, but we can see that it's black. Oh, and there's even dust coming off it. <laughs> so, flick. so what happens is water's gotten in there. This wire is not marine grade. It's not tinned. Okay, it's just bare copper. Now all of those little strands all going next to each other they form little capillaries and water will wick and draw up there and carry the corrosion with it. So that's not really that great. And when I say not really that great, I mean highly undesirable. Um, any connections like this as well that sort of um, become poor, you know, like uh, that corrosion builds up and it has resistance in it, they can start to heat up and Maybe not in this, and they can become a fire risk. This circuit actually has a, between power and the fridge, there is a line protection circuit. 
So that's all right if it, um, you know, if it suddenly you have a short and, it, and power can go all the way to negative straight away, that would blow the fuse. But some of these little hot spots, they can be a bit of a worry. Um, anyway, what I'm going to do is just bin this. <laughs> There's just no point keeping it. But because there was a few jumps in um, of the cable, the other reason why I wanted to strip that and have a good look is just so there wasn't any surprises of the positive wire going to <laughs> a different colour. All right, I just wanted to make sure there was continuity all the way through before I before I um, rewire it. beautiful tonight where we're staying but winter has really kicked in now it's like I'd say it's about three or four degrees it's dead still the sky is pink and it's 4 30 it's just starting to get dark here he is now he's just arrived back from a hard day at work Hey it's baby, cold. it's so cold. <laughs> How was your day? Fog's coming out of my mouth. You do not know what I have in mind. I know it is cold. I packed our bags when we on our way. The night was long as I waited without a sigh. Another bit in the side there. Yes. So I've got some pasture raised pork, Tasmanian pork out, a little fillet with crackling for dinner tonight. So we're going to tuck into that. We've got an oven, which is pretty, I'm pretty appreciative of, which we don't have on Marul, so we've been making the most of having an oven. We've got some celery out here, so we're going to make celery out puree with our fork. If you enjoyed this week's video, thanks for giving it a like. We would like to thank all our viewers whose continued funding has made it possible to bring you these episodes every week.